we're very lucky because we're gonna launch our first ever ESL podcast. By the way, my name is Steven. I'll be your host for today. And our guest here is so special because uh, we seldom have students from Mongolia. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce her. By the way, she is 16 years old. She's from Ulad Batar, the capital city of Mongolia. Please welcome Paris. Hi. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. Okay. Thank you. I think it's gonna be better if you will say your name in a Mongolian accent. Okay. Okay, please. So my name is Ingstim Arhanghu. Ingstim Arhanghu. Okay, that's a bit difficult to <laughs> pronounce, but it's all right. Anyway, you taught me yesterday how to pronounce it, right? Yeah. But I think it's better if you will do it. Okay. Anyway, so. Uh, you, this is your first time in the Philippines, right? Yes, it's my yes. first time. Yes. What is your course? My course is IELTS. Okay. You're taking IELTS. All right. And what is your target score? Um, well, realistically, my target score is 7 or 7.5, mm -hmm. but I'm aiming for 9. Okay. Wow. That's a perfect score, actually. Yes. <laughs> How long have you been staying in CIP so far? I'm staying in CIP for four weeks. Mm -hmm. Total of four weeks. Four, total of four weeks. Yes, and I've heard that you're leaving later this afternoon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, for the IELTS subject, which one is do you think the most difficult subject in IELTS? Well, in IELTS, I think that writing is most difficult. For most me. difficult. Yes. Why do you think it's difficult? Because in IELTS, you have to be more academic mm -hmm. and more. In IELTS writing, you have only one hour mm -hmm. to write two essays, so I think it's more difficult than the other parts. I see. I, I agree with that because, yeah. you know, uh, I, I was a teacher before and writing from your own ideas will really take time. Yeah. Like in uh, task one, you already have the graph, the chart, the, so you just have to construct your sentences, right? But in task two, you have to think, yeah. you have to organize everything, you have to plan. All right, so for those of you guys who want to take the IELTS subject, so you have to practice writing and organizing your thoughts, especially in writing an essay. Okay, now, that's the difficult subject for you. How about uh, the subject that you think is the easiest? Um, well, I think uh, for me, mm -hmm. listening and speaking are the most easiest. Okay. Topic the most easy subjects, yes. all right? And I think, yeah, you have a good accent. By the way, let's talk about your uh, ability in English speaking. How did you get this kind of good American accent? Well, for my accent, I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos, mm -hmm. a lot of American YouTube videos, vlogs, mm -hmm. product reviews. Mm -hmm. And I think that watching videos helped me to get into the English speaking environment. That's true. So mm -hmm. that I can pick up the English effortlessly. Okay, good, good, good. Do you copy the speaker's way of talking or you just try to listen and then try to repeat it by yourself? I didn't really do any conscious mm -hmm. effort. Like I didn't really have to, had to repeat mm -hmm. to learn. Um, if you watch a lot of videos, it just like comes together somehow. I totally agree with that. I like that word, conscious effort. Yes. You know what, that's the problem uh, or the common problem for students here. They usually they are usually conscious when they speak. Yes. You know, they, they think about the technical aspects like the grammar, vocabulary, uh, is it, you know, present perfect tense, present tense. Yeah. Uh, but of course, basically, you all need these things mm. for you to improve your speaking. Yes. But along the way, you have to practice speaking without that conscious effort. And that's a good yeah. word. I like it. Okay. Now, uh, what you, you said speaking and listening are your like easy subjects, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can we know what is your average score in the mock test? I mean, listening. Uh, in the listening, I got eight, band eight for my last mock test. Mm -hmm. That's really high. So amazing, yes. Yeah, seriously, because uh, I think very few of our students uh, get this kind of score. It's not that easy. It's almost perfect, right? Uh, by the way, guys, if you're listening, uh, the IELTS exam consists of 40 questions. Am I right? Yeah. 
for the questions and there are four parts. Yes. Okay, so you have to achieve uh, answering those 40 questions within one hour. Am yes. I correct? Yes. yes. Yes, for you guys who wants to take IELTS subjects a day. Okay, now talking about listening. You're getting this high score. Can you tell us uh, what are your strategies or probably your study habits in listening? Well, in listening, you have this question sheet, right? Mm -hmm. On the question sheet, there are questions and then there are the answers. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the answers and, no, look at the question. Okay. And try to predict or try to guess what the word might be mm -hmm. beforehand. And then listen to the audio after. And while you're listening to the audio, don't take don't write any answers because like if you can't you you can't write and listen at the same time that's true mm -hmm. yes. exactly that's that's a nice strategy yeah. Yeah. well actually there are a lot of strategies in IELTS listening but the best way is Paris way so <laughs> guys if you want to try it please listen and learn from our guest okay so uh, yeah IELTS how about IELTS speaking uh, do you have any study habits or probably like strategies in IELTS speaking? Well, in IELTS speaking... Um, I mean, your usual ways of, you know, practicing IELTS speaking? Um, well, in IELTS speaking, the hardest part is the part two, right? Mm -hmm. So, in part two, the examiner will give you one minute mm -hmm. to prepare for your yes. speech. It's true. So within the one minute, you should you can do mind mapping. Mm -hmm. I get, I think mind mapping is the most effective way to speak. That's true. Yes. By the way, Paris uh, talked about IELTS part two. In part two, you have to describe something. Yes. Yes, it's true, right? Yeah. Describe something, and you have to be very careful about the tense. Yes. The, is the question. You know, or do you have to use present tense in this question? Do you have to use past tense in this question, right? Yeah. And you have to uh, probably elaborate your answers in part two. That's why... Extend your answers. Extend your answers, yes, that's true. Uh, we've talked about your uh, studying here at CIP. Yes. Now, yesterday, your manager, Moon, told me that you had a presentation yeah. and it's all about anxiety. Yes. You know what? That's actually a, uh, how can I say, difficult, uh, a more uh, like a deeper kind of topic. Yes. And I think for some people, anxiety is a sensitive topic. Mm. So let me ask you, why did you choose this topic? Well, firstly, anxiety is a really common thing amongst teenagers or even adults. Mm -hmm. And also, I... I used to suffer from, not suffer, like I used to have a little mild anxiety mm -hmm. for my early teenage years. What age do you remember? Um, 14. 14. 15, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Now, for those, for those students who are not really good at English, can you explain the feeling of anxiety? I mean, what, what, what could be the feeling of a person who is experiencing this kind of stage mm, okay. from your experience, yes. Okay. Well, anxiety is basically a feeling of nervousness. Mm -hmm. And it's basically like when you are trying to do something risky or you're about to do something important, you get nervous. Mm. And that's anxiety. Okay. Being nervous. All right, talking about nervousness. So uh, you told me yesterday that you joined a school competition. Yes. All right, back in your high school days? Yes. Okay. What, uh, this is all about fashion competition? Yes, fashion All right, can you tell us about this fashion competition? Uh, well, each year my school hosts these fashion competitions. And from within our school, we divide into two categories. All right. The fashion designers and all the right. fashion models. Fashion. And fashion designers have to make mm -hmm. one collection of clothes all right and then participate in the competition mm -hmm. 
fashion. This is not actually a common competition for high school students, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, may, may, may I know that uh, did you do this fashion competition in a like what a stadium or just in a school auditorium or probably in a small room like this? Not not small room like this, but like my school has a theater, mm -hmm. small smallish theater, All right. and we do our competition in there. Okay. All right, so you know what? Uh, I'm also a performer on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when the lights hit you, what, what, what do you feel? And there's a music, to, to, and you're walking like, you know, mm -hmm. going to the center. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, right before going on stage, mm -hmm. there are a lot of thoughts in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, what if I fall? Uh, okay? That's true. I get a lot of anxiety before mm -hmm. going on stage. But however, when I go on stage, that every thought I thought about, every bad thought would just <laughs> evaporate. Mm -hmm. And then I just enjoy the music and walk. Okay. And also, when the lights hit you in the face, mm -hmm. you can't really see the, uh, the audience. That's true. That's true. You can't see the you're, audience. You're like so, blind on stage, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So it feels like you're just walking alone. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's nothing to be scared about. Okay. How many inches of heels do you wear? Is that four inches? Or did you wear in that competition? Four uh, inches? No, no, no. Um, we don't really use ah, inches. Okay. All right. But in centimeters, my high heels was 12 centimeters. Probably like this? Probably like this. Like this? Yeah. Wow. For how many minutes did you wear this kind of heels? Well, the competition really, uh, usually takes for three, three hours. Mm -hmm. But at the backstage, you can take off your high heels. Okay. Oh yeah, that's true. And okay, now at the back, you mentioned the backstage, right? Yeah. You know, uh, we're working for the production team. When you say backstage or behind the scenes, we're talking about a more busy environment. Yeah. Oh come on, you have to wear this clothes. Huh? Come on, come on. Oh, where's yeah, my yeah, contestant, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? You should not take a rest. Let's do this, right? Mm. It, actually, for me, in my experience, it's more busy and I'm more probably you feel more nervous yes backstage so at is nervous. backstage right yeah so how did you uh how did you deal with this kind of busy environment at the backstage while you're in the competition for example you're here this is the backstage mm -hmm. and probably you know that, that there's a next part of the competition so what do you do or what mm. how did you deal with this pressure at the backstage okay um for models, you have to change your clothes mm -hmm. really fast. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I bring two or three of my friends backstage and they help me. Okay. Get in so. Do you have a manager back then? No. Not really. Not really. Mm -hmm. No manager. No manager. But my mom used mm -hmm. to help me a lot. My mom is my okay. manager. There's a term in that, it's a slang, they call it stage mom. Stage mom. It means your mom always support you in whatever endeavor you 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 want to join yeah, yeah, yeah stage mom or stage dad okay anyway all right um now let's connect anxiety and your fashion competition did you feel anxious about that competition yes mm -hmm. every year i feel really anxious because um in the first year of competition mm -hmm. I won the competition actually. And Congratulations. Then, thank you very mm -hmm. much. And then the following years, I kind of had to win the competition because like mm -hmm. in the first year I won, right? Yep. So if I won the first year, I can't lose the next year. That's true. I have to improve, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. So each year I, ha I had this like social pressure. Social pressure. On like winning the competition. So I had these really hard anxieties. I see. So, you, so you, is it like, or was it like you overthink yeah. every day? Yes. Like, am I going to win again? Yes. Uh, am I going to lose or what? Yes. How about my parents' expectation? My teacher's expectation, perhaps, right? Yes. Okay. Social pressure. I like that word. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, how did you deal with this pressure? Uh, by the way, did you join the competition for the second time? Yeah. You joined? I joined mm -hmm. four times. Four times. How was it? Did you win again? Yeah, I win again. So, for two times? No, four times. Four times. Strike. You were the champion for that fashion. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, our guest here, okay, won four times in the fashion competition. Okay, that's Paris. All right. <laughs> okay, talking about winning a lot of, comp you know, fashion. Talk about, we talk about clothes, dresses, and your personality, right? Mm. So, I think uh, that's the uh, most or, or, or the, uh, the, the best factor why you feel social pressure because the more you are exposed to the society yes the more people expect yes. from you sure. right but uh, or, or however you become famous or you become popular in your school right yeah kind of <laughs> do you feel anxiety like you know when you walk in the school area, oh, Paris, hello, Paris, hello. No, I Paris, don't... can we take a picture like that? No, 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 no you don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, my school, everyone is really friendly. Okay. They just wave at you and then say hi, and it's, that's it. Oh. I'm not really popular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not that mm -hmm. popular. <laughs> <laughs> no, because in the Philippines, if you're popular, even just at school, you know what? It's like a paparazzi. Oh, hi, hi, can we take a... Oh, they, they're going to post it to Facebook, Instagram, and probably other social media platforms. Yes, really, the Philippines. Mm. If, if you're popular here, if it's just in a small group or society, uh, they will really, you know, uh, be friends with you. Mm. And they're, they're going to be, oh, yeah, Paris is my friend. She won four times, something mm. like that. Mm. Probably the culture is different in Mongolia. Yeah, it must mm -hmm. be different. Okay. Must be different. Okay, Paris, so if you're going to look back okay four times winning the fashion competition and you told us that you felt this feeling of anxiety mm -hmm. um how are you gonna change it or how are you gonna uh, recover from that anxiety mm. well my experience in this fashion competition was nothing but pleasant mm -hmm. but however um for anxiety i wouldn't really give much thought or wouldn't, wouldn't really give wouldn't really think or worry about mm -hmm. my competitions because um, I, I didn't really I didn't really have to worry because I kept winning and okay all right <laughs> and for anxiety you shouldn't really think about the future and um, speaking now I I don't really want to change the past mm -hmm. because that's what take me here. That's true. Here I am. Very good. Good answer. Okay. Okay, Paris. So you're living later. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what could be your best advice for those Mongolian students who want to take the IELTS? Mm, okay. Well, my advice is take mock tests. Mm -hmm. Take mock tests frequently and then mm. take mock tests until you reach your Target score. Target score. Mm -hmm. And after you read your par target score in the mock test, and then the, take, take the official test. Okay, that's a good advice. Take the mock test frequently, guys. So if you're listening, guys, take the mock test all the time, all right? Yeah, that's true, actually. Practice makes perfect, as everybody says that, yeah. right? Okay, all right. Now, how about giving an advice to those people who are experiencing anxiety nowadays? Mm. Because I think you can best give, uh, you're the best person to give advice because you have experienced it before, right? Yes. Okay, what could be that best advice? Um, I would say that most importantly, live in the moment. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't worry about the past, because it's already in the past, you can't do anything to fix it or change it. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about the future too, because you, you can't do nothing about it. It will happen when it will happen. And Dalai Lama once said, if you have a problem in life, mm -hmm. if not, why worry? That's true. Do you have a problem in life? If yes, can you do anything about it? Mm -hmm. No? No. Then why worry? So don't worry and just be happy, I guess. <laughs> nice. That's the best advice. Probably just go with the flow. And they just like Paris said, forget about the past. It's 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 now time to to face what's happening at present. Probably make a plan, have a clear yeah. vision, and then don't think too much about it, right? Just yeah. go with the flow. Okay. Focus on now. Focus on 
uh, focus on the present. Okay, yeah. that's good. All right. So before we end this show, so what could be or or do you want to thank some people in CIP, your teachers, mm, okay. buddy teacher, friends? I would like to thank all my teachers, all my ESL teachers, all my IELTS teachers. Teachers, thank you for being so kind mm -hmm. and so patient with me, <laughs> and thank you for mm -hmm. being so intelligent, kind, mm -hmm. and the most wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And I, w I would also want to thank my family. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being for being there for me, and thank you for supporting me through all these journeys. And thank you, my mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, her stage mom. Yes. Stage mom. How about your manager, your Mongolian manager? Was it like oh, to? <laughs> yeah, just here right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you for leading me mm. through this, through my CIP journey, mm -hmm. and thank you for giving all me all these advices mm. and giving me like trying to give me all the best teachers in CIP. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing that. All Karen, right. I love you. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, that's good. All right. And so I think that's it. Thank you very much, Paris. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And um, I hope that you could recommend CIP to your friends when you come back to Mongolia. Uh, by the way, what's your plan when you come back to when you go back to Mongolia? Are you going to study? Oh, uh, yes. Join the fashion competition again? Uh, no. I'm going to study okay. because I am a high school junior mm -hmm. and I'll go back to school. All right. Good, good. And I hope that you will continue learning English. Okay. All right. So, friends, this is Paris from Mongolia. So that's it for today. We're so fortunate that we had a guest from Mongolia. Please watch out for our next episode. And you're watching ESL Podcast, English Stories and Lifestyles.